guys, welcome to Healthy Eats with Dr. Paz and I'm Kim Pachati. And are you ready? Why don't you go ahead and lay down? He's panting. It's hot. It's one of these hot days here today. I know. You go ahead and go lay down. All right. We are going to do today's show on rice. Um, I'm sure you've all been there. We all have been there where we've had our dogs have had upset stomach, um, maybe a little bathroom problems, and we've had it, we heard the, hey, you need to put them on chicken and rice. And it's always a pain to kind of go through and make all that chicken, make all that rice. And a lot of times you have leftovers. So we're going to kind of address that in a little bit. But first I wanted to tell you a little bit more about rice um, in our dog's diet. Uh, because they're one of those items, again, that there's a lot of controversy back and forth. Uh, in 2016, it was actually found in rice that arsenic was in a lot of the rice that not only the dogs eat, but we eat. So there was a consumer report that had just kind of went and raided all the different, you know, all the different places and to get it. And a lot of the rice here in the U.S. had where it had the arsenic in it. Um, there is a way to get rid of it, and basically it's just rinsing the rice. And that's kind of where you know all these rice companies came out and said that they didn't have it, and it was a whole big controversial fight. But there is white rice, there is brown rice, there is basmati rice, there is jasmine rice. I mean, how do you know what is the best? So, a little bit of information on it. Brown rice, obviously what that is, is that is where the hull has not been taken off the rice. So you can see it's darker. Um, more fiber, uh, more nutrient value than rice. However, our, this is regular enriched white rice. Um, that's a little bit more easy for your dogs to digest um, because it's less fiber, it's kind of less going through. And then you've got long organic, long grain rice, um, which is what we use today for the recipe, and we feel that is the best. There's also sticky rice, or what they call sweet rice, uh, which is actually good for dogs that have kidney issues um, because it's lower in phosphorus. Um, but rice isn't all bad. Uh, you know, obviously, there, you know, all the stuff that's touting now as far as grain-free diets, and then now all these things are coming out where don't feed your dog grain-free because dogs are having heart issues from it and so forth. So like I said, this whole dog food industry is nothing but controversy. Um, a lot of people will go and they'll buy the higher priced kibbles, um, seeing that they say brown rice or seeing that they say, you know, rice and the lower priced kibbles normally have just the white rice because it's less expensive. But what did you know is there is a human grade rice and an animal feed rice, which is two totally different things. Um, feed rice is what the dog food companies use, unless they tout it's human grade ingredients, which that's the other thing I'd really like to know is why do the dog food companies go where they put on their bags everything that they don't include? Why don't they put the things that they really do include? That's really what we need to know is what's in that bag. Um, but as I said, in cooking for your dog, you know, they talk about, um, you know, if it, if it has the upset stomach, go ahead and boil your chicken. Um, and basically that's all we did, just we poached it. And we just kind of shredded up the chicken. And a lot of times you never know how long your dog's going to be not feeling very well or how long, many days you're going to have to give them the chicken and rice. So you usually end up making a big batch. But what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how you can make a, a nice dinner for yourself along with having to do this for the dog. So it's not so bad, you know, from that aspect. So why don't we go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing that we're actually going to be making, we're going to keep theirs bland. Um, and this is something that, you know, like I said, you can give them, but we want to watch the contents that we give them. If you've got the chicken and rice and you've still got some leftover, maybe they're feeling a little bit better, or maybe your dog is totally fine and you just want to make the meal for yourself and give them some. We're going to limit their ingredients on this one because we're, we're going to kind of garlic it up a little bit and put a little bit more salt in it or put salt in it um, and add a couple other things that, you know, the balsamic glaze and kind of stuff to it for our taste that they really don't need. Uh, a couple of things that we will add that they do like are parsley, which is very, very good for them and also helps with digestion, along with some basil. So we'll give Cosmos that, and then, of course, he has to have his, have his cheese. So we're sticking with his Pecorino uh, Romano cheese, um, and we're going to have the gooey, ooey, stringy mozzarella cheese. So let's get going on this for right now. Um, so we are going to kind of heat up our pan just a little bit. And we're going to make Cosmos's last. We're going to start ours because then we're going to put ours in to the broiler to kind of top off and melt off the cheese. And we're just going to make this in one pot. So this is just going to be a simple skillet dish. Uh, like I said, easy if you're, you know, because 
after you've made all that rice and cooked all that rice, which is a whole other story of how to cook it. But let's get, get this kind of going here for us. We're going to put a little bit of olive oil in ours. And we are going to put in some of our garlic. And once again, we use that organic garlic. And the dogs, like we talked about, they can have some of this, um, but not like this, not this much. You know, we'll use a little bit of garlic powder for flavoring for theirs because in the garlic, you know, is good for the fleas and ticks. Also, a lot of different antimicrobial benefits from that standpoint. So we're going to get that going, and we're going to get some of our tomatoes going here. Um, a lot of people are very, very timid uh, when they go to cook rice. I mean, that's why they came out with the rice cookers, because a lot of people, I've got about a cup and a half of these tomatoes. So I'm just going to kind of stick that. We might as well just stick them all in there. And we're going to let them kind of go through a little bit and uh, simmer down. Uh, but a lot of people are very, very, like, caught off about rice. And one thing when you're cooking for the dogs is you almost have to overcook it. Uh, and as I was saying, they were going, well, a lot of people, they, they go use a rice cooker. Um, some people will make the rice in the oven. Some people will even make it, we knew, uh, down at Johnson & Wales, where they would actually do it sometimes, where they would just do it like pasta. You just put a ton of water in, and then you drain it out. So everybody has their way. Uh, the instant rice, you know, the white rice and all that kind of stuff, that's a whole together different rice. That's not what you want to really use um, because those are the nutrients of that. A lot have been you know, taken out and getting it to that factor to be down to be able to cook it so quickly. But I'm going to grab my oregano and my standard basil and oregano that we always go to here and get that going on our tomatoes. And we're going to let that simmer up a little bit. Um, go watch and Power Puppy Bite and we'll be right back. Puppy barking is a common problem that a lot of new puppy owners face. But what are you supposed to do? This dog is just randomly barking and you really don't know why. Well, puppies do it for attention. Puppies do it for fun. Puppies do it because they're bored. So you need to figure out the cause or why. They also do it if they're fearful. So figure out the cause of why they're doing it. If they're doing it just to be annoying and just be puppies, then switch it around. Make it a game. Teach them how to bark on cue, teach them how to be quiet on cue. All of a sudden, now it becomes a training experience. When you teach dogs the opposite per deal, super easy for them to learn. And that's just another Empower Puppy Bite. Your eyes are always bigger than what you really think is gonna come out of the box. Um, and that's what I wanted to show you too here. That's why I've got two big bowls of rice. This was actually two cups of rice. So look how much rice that actually made. Uh, we did it with four cups of water, and a lot of times you'll see where uh, they tell you to overcook the dog's rice, which because it's easily more digestible. Uh, a lot of times you'll say, okay, one cup of rice to, instead of two cups of water, three cups of water. But if you do that, you need to be real careful because it's going to mush up on you very, very quickly and very, very fast. One tip that I like to do is I cook it precisely for 20 minutes, as long as I know that I've done it exactly as I need to do it. But then I'll take it out, fluff it up with a fork, I'll throw it on a sheet pan, and I'll pop it straight into a freezer or a refrigerator, kind of, we used to have glass chillers is what we call them, to be able just to kind of stop that cooking right away. Some people like to rinse it, but a lot of times when you're cooking back with the rice and you want to add more flavor to it, like we're going to be adding our rice into our tomatoes right now, um, by rinsing it, by coming off and rinsing it that way, what happens is you wash away some of the starch. So, so you wash away the absorption factor, a factor of the rice. It's kind of like pasta. Like if you're making you know, spaghetti and so forth, you don't want to rinse it or you don't want to coat it with olive oil because then, then what happens is whatever sauce that you're creating doesn't penetrate the noodle. Um, some way, you know, they get by that. You see rigid noodles. That's to hold the sauce more uh, when you do those kinds of things. So we want to keep that exterior of the rice a little bit rigidy from that starch, so then it will absorb the flavors that we're kind of cooking into it. So now we've got some tomatoes kind of going in there. I'm going to keep this on about medium so you can see we're, we're kind of thickening up a little bit there. I'm going to pop in a little bit of parsley, and we're going to pop in a little bit of basil, and we're going to give that a little bit of a stir, and then we're going to add in our chicken, which is going to create some more moisture in here. We're going to put just a little bit more olive oil as well some of that chicken in there. And like I said, this was, actually we just used chicken breast with the bones. We poached this 
um, and then we shredded it. But you can very easily use a rotisserie chicken. Just make sure if you're doing it for the dog, um, he doesn't need any spices on it right now, especially if he's not feeling well. Today we're going to put him on for Cosmos because Cosmos has to have all his good stuff with it. Um, and he's fine with it, but know your dog. Remember, like we've talked about, that every dog is different. Every dog's diet is different. So once again, make sure you're using your fold-over technique when you're stirring, because we don't want to turn this into a bunch of mush. And what you can put in here as well, which tastes really good, but I didn't bring it down, is some white wine. Um, you can pop a little bit of that in, and that'll create some steam and give that chicken a real good flavor, moist. So it's kind of like a little bit of a white wine with that as well. But we're just going to use a little bit of olive oil. Um, you can probably use it. You can also use a little bit of chicken broth, which I forgot to bring over. So we're going to end up probably popping a little bit of that in there too prior to, to getting this in the oven. But we're going to kind of keep this down here. We're going to let this heat just for a few more minutes. And then I'm going to show you what we're going to do to dress it all out. We'll pop it in and toast it up. But now we're going to get Cosmos's going. And his is going to be very, very simple as well because we are, like I said, going to keep it simple. And if your dog, if you're doing it when your dog is not feeling well, just make sure you heat them up. An easy way to heat up rice um, is put them in Ziploc bags after you do. Put on a pot of boiling water and just put it right inside there. This way you don't have to use the microwave. And that works very, very easy. Same thing with the chicken. You can even mix it all up and make little bags and mix it up together because some dogs... It's funny because some dogs won't eat things separated. Um, you know, Cosmos kind of likes all his mush together, uh, where I've had a dog one time where they kind of like lined everything up. It's kind of like the people that don't like their food touching on their plate. You know, it's very, very similar to that. So we're going to give Cosmos a little bit of oil too. And we're just going to pop in a little bit of rice for him. We're not going to make him too much here. He already had lunch anyway today, but we'll have a little snack for him. We are going to put in parsley for him because parsley actually does really, really good for dogs that have bad breath as well. So, and we're going to put him a little bit of chicken in too. And we can give him the tomatoes. Uh, the tomatoes can be for the lycopene, but I already dumped them all in there. Um, but make sure, once again, if you're giving your dog tomatoes, they, they're much, much better off cooked. You never want to give them the stems um, because in the stems they have what they call as lectin. And it's funny because tomato is a plant, like we were talking last week about the potatoes, that actually has its own way of fighting off the bugs that attack it. So if you see that, that's what the green parts and the vine and all that kind of stuff, there's lectin in there that's fighting off all the little bugs that come and eat all the tomatoes. And we're going to give him a little bit of basil. So we are going to get this all ready and pop it. I'm going to go get some chicken broth and put that in there. Uh, so we're, and we're going to get our topping off, put it off in the broiler, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, well, we got ours toasting off the top because we're going to leave that under the boiler for a little bit. We're going to get that cheese all nice, ooey and gooey. And I need to turn this off here so I don't burn myself. But we are going to talk a little bit more about yin and yang. Yin and yang. And if you're not sure what that is, Chinese medicine has a whole together different appeal on, on they call them hot colds and cooling colds and or hot foods and cooling foods. I can't get my words straight here today. And the reason I'm kind of paying a little bit of attention to this and, and kind of really want to learn a little bit more about it is in Asia, they don't really have the cancer rates like we do. For example, the United States was rated number six for cancer rates. Japan was, I believe, 48, and China wasn't on there at all. Now, these guys eat this stuff like there's no tomorrow. So what is it all about it, and is it true as far as this? And they're doing this as far as with dogs as well. You know, that's, you know our vets are telling us, um, go ahead and give them chicken and rice, but chicken is actually a hot food, what they call a hot food. Rice is neutral, okay? So hot foods basically feed the imbalance in your dog. And the way to tell if your dog is a hot dog or a hot dog, a hot dog or a cool dog is to feel his ears. You want to feel his ears 
Now, Cosmos is warm. His ears are warm. Some dogs are very, very cool, and some dogs are very, very hot. So what that tells in the Chinese yin and yang is that there's an imbalance in their system. And for the dogs that are hot, obviously you want to feed them cooler foods. For the dogs that are cool, you want to feed them, you know, the warmer foods. Um, so it's a whole together different thing. And they say chicken is hot, but yet turkey is cool. So, you know, if you're interested in that, kind of look that up. It's, it's, they've got a lot of different concepts. And I think that there's something behind Chinese medicine. Um, I mean, it's, you know, they have Eastern and Western medicine and the way we cook, the way they cook. But I think we can kind of learn a lot if you just kind of check out all the different things. So we're going to check on ours right now. Cosmos is ready. I just need to plate that up. And we'll be right back. All right, guys, that's how we look. We came out really, really awesome. So now we're just going to plate all this up. And you can get the recipe this week at empoweredpups.com. We thank you for joining us. I hope you learned something about rice. Um, and we'll find out what we're going to do and what we're going to learn about next week, Cos, right? We'll find something. But thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>